Hi guys, welcome back to Skinny Brew Rugby. So it's round 10 of Super Rugby. Uh, this is the prediction video. If you want to watch the fantasy team video, I'll link it up here. Uh, if you like my content, please hit the subscribe button here below. Join the Super Brew pools, it's in the description below. Uh, yeah, let's get into the week. I don't think it's the easiest week to call. Uh, the Crusaders, the Jaguars and the Bulls are all on bye, so it's very difficult. The first game is the Chiefs versus the Lions. The, the Chiefs will be on a high after that narrow win against the Blues last week. Uh, but that, can they make it four wins in a row for this season? Uh, especially without Damian McKenzie and Brody Retallick who are injured. Do they have the firepower to uh, win this game? Uh, they really put on a great show last week, the Crusaders. They, uh, the Chiefs, they scored really nice tries. Um, I still think they can do it. Uh, Weber takes over the captaincy and uh, Nankerville is at the outside center and he scored amazing tries this season coming off the bench. Then the Lions, they really need to win this one after losing their last two games. But uh, they've had poor defense so far this season. Not only poor tackling but their defensive organization is very poor as well. Yankees and Marks, they are both on the bench. Lombard comes in for Yankees. He has looked promising. I can see he's a, he could be a very dangerous player um, for that Lions team. Then Whiteley, he comes back from injury. The Lions really need him at this moment. He is the actual captain and they really need his leadership if they want to get their season back on track. Um, but I don't think the Lions have what it takes. Um, especially with this Chiefs that's on a high. Um, I think the Chiefs will win by 8. The next game is the Sunwolves versus the Hurricanes. These two teams have only played each other twice in history. Both of those, the Hurricanes came away with a good victory. The Hurricanes beat them by 28 and the other time they beat them by 64. Uh, the Sunwolves this season, they have 2 from 8 where the Hurricanes have 5 from 8. The Hurricanes are resting both of the Barrett brothers this week, uh, which is a huge part of their attacking strength. So we'll have to see how they actually play without those two in their attack. Uh, the Sunwolves made an interesting selection. Warren Wasayoko, their loose forward, is playing at 12 today or at, on Saturday. Can he actually play there? Maybe he played there on age group level. I can definitely see him being able to do it. He is quite fast, he is big, he is strong, and he actually does score tries a lot. So maybe number 12, I don't know. I think he could do it. Uh, then Hayden Parker for the Sunwolves. He's, there's been talks of him being an All Black um, because of Damien McKenzie who's out now. They need another uh, first five or a number 10. Uh, or a fly half, depending on where you're from. <laughs> Who else could do it? I, except Marty Banks, maybe the other fly halves in the cr country, like Otoro Black, uh, Josh Iowani, those guys, they don't really look like they're at that level yet to become an All Black. I know that they have strict rules with the All Blacks of selecting foreign based players, so we'll have to see what they do about that. The Hurricanes, they did select their strongest team available, except for the two Barretts and Savaya. Um, the team still looks very strong. Uh, the latest losses for the Hurricanes are both against the Crusaders. The rest of the games they won. Will this team actually beat the Japanese side? I think so. I think they will actually score 14 points over there. Then it's the Sharks versus the Reds. Both come off of loss losses. The Reds have won one out of four away games this season. And the Sharks, you don't give them a home game because they've only won two out of five. Um, yeah, the Reds were completely outplayed last week. If it wasn't for Karevi's couple of tries, he is a standout player in that team. If it wasn't for those couple of tries, they that score would have looked a lot worse. Uh, the Reds brought in Nayavalo back on the wing. 
he is a very good player, he's strong, he's a good runner and they need a bit more size in that back line because Karevi is the only big guy actually in that back line. McDermott on the scrum off for the Reds, he's really been a good player this season. I like how he plays, he's very fast and he's one of those small scrum offs. Um, not these guys that keep on kicking the whole time. Then the Sharks brought back Kuni Oesteisen and the Beast Matwara Rira. Um, yeah, they really need them to step up. Their scrum wasn't that great last week, so they need uh, these guys to get their scrum back on track. The Sharks did rest Mapimpi and Um. Um is in great form lately, so how will that backline do without him? Jock Vermeulen is back in the loose forwards for the Sharks. He's a very strong runner he's, and he's very quick. Um, I'm excited to see him play again. Then Rob De Priya on number 10 again. I think he really needs a bit, a bit of a resting chance. Maybe he steps up his game again, but the last few weeks he's been on a down, downward spiral with form. So they need to see who their alternative options are just for a little bit until he gets back to his form. But that being said, I think the Sharks will still win by 12. Okay, then we head over to New Zealand for the derby over there. The Highlanders have six point, oh, six points behind the Blues, um, but they tra uh, and the Blues are traditionally the worst side in New Zealand. So it's actually interesting to see it like this. The Highlanders are in the last place on the conference. The Blues have won four out of eight games this season, where the Highlanders have only won two out of eight. The Blues haven't beaten the Highlanders away since 2011. So that's a bit of history over there. Can they get over that history? It's a very difficult one. Last week against the Chiefs, they couldn't get over that. The Highlanders have only won one out of three at home this season. Um, they've been missing Aaron Smith this last few weeks, but he's a surprise inclusion on the bench for the Highlanders. Um, they rely a lot on Ben Smith in attack, and he's going to be a crucial part for their team again. The Blues did beat the Highlanders earlier this season in Auckland. Um, so can they do it now again? But the Blues have only won at home this season. They haven't won anything away. And Nonu has been very great in that team. He's been selected again at 12. There's talks of him playing at All Black level again. It's very exciting. That's going to bring the best out of him. There is a lot of competition for the role. But hey, you always need that experience of a guy like Nonu and I am a massive fan of him. Then there's also talks of Black, if he could play for the All Blacks. I don't see it, he doesn't really have anything special to it uh, that he does. He doesn't play really special rugby on the field and he's kicking. It's getting better but usually it's atrocious. Then it's the Waratahs versus the Rebels. Um, it's Aussie number one and two in the conference. The Rebels are seven points ahead of the Waratahs, but the Waratahs have a game in hand. The Waratahs have won three out of seven this season. They're not like the best season where the Rebels have won five out of eight and they've only lost against South African teams. Um, the latest one that shot one last week against the Stormers. Um, Cooper had an off day in that game, so I'm expecting him to step up his game and have a better game today or on Saturday. But yeah, the Waratahs, how are they going to do with that whole Falau saga going on there? I heard they're going to pick, or they picked Kurtley Beal on the fullback, so is he actually going to do well? The last time they picked him at fullback, they attacking game was poor, his defense was poor, he wasn't in position. I didn't really like it. The Waratahs have won 8 out of the last 10 games these two teams have played. So that history over there is strong. But remember the Rebels have a lot of firepower in that back line. I'm talking about like guys like Kenya, Cooper, Hodge, Maddox. You can just name any of them. Meeks, English, that back line is scattered with um, firepower. So I think this Rebel side will win by five in this game. The last game for the week is the Stormers versus the Brumbies. Can the Stormers put another one over Australian team? 
Um, they struggled against the Reds, they beat the Rebels. They're back at Newlands where they are very strong. They never lose at Newlands. They've only played two at home this season. Um, so this is their third game, so can they make it as well? They've won four out of eight games this season where the Brumbies have won three out of eight. But the Brumbies weren't that good last week in their victory over the Lions. I just think the Lions were very poor last week. The, these two teams, they haven't played since 2016 against each other. So it's a difficult one to go on history. The Brumbies have, haven't won any games out of their four games on road. And now they're on a tour in South Africa, so I can't see that going better for them. The Brumbies have no real standout players in that team, except maybe the front row, they are good. Um, the Stormers, they had a very strong defensive game last week. And you, you can see their attack is to pounce on that mistake and go for the tries from there. And they did go really well from the other team's mistakes. So the Brumbies are going to make a few mistakes. They are going to be problems. Then John Luke Duplessis at number 10. He's a very wild player. He, you can expect wild passes from him and kicks and um, even just trying outrageous stuff. Where Josh Thunder, he's a bit more calm player. He just does his job. He does it excellently, I think. So, yeah, we'll see what they go, go with. Are they going to go with calm or are they going to go with wild again? Um, but for me, the Stormers have the upper hand in this one. I think the Stormers will win by 19. Okay, guys, that's it for the week. Join the Super Brew Pools. Please subscribe if you haven't. The pools description are down below. And yeah, check out the fantasy team video, which will be somewhere here next to me at the moment. So, cheers.